Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, as uh, Chairman said, I'm Bernard Adu from EGA, the Ops Manager. I'll be standing in for Mr. Kingsley Amea. I, I know most of you know him. Um, he's a bit uh, indisposed at the moment. That's why I'm here to do this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, before I start, may I ask if uh, I'm going to try and make it a bit interactive so we share ideas as we go along. Uh, please, do we have any pineapple shippers here? Anybody shipping pineapples? Uh, food items? Any food item shippers here? It's okay. Um, it's uh, quite Herculean as sometimes trying to talk about some of these things because we have a lot of uh, monies involved in all this shipping business that we are doing. Uh, to proceed, you realize that uh, export by air, it's a very uh, serious business. Airlines are putting in so much money, so much uh, investment, getting the right aircraft to be able to load some of the things that we need to make sure our exporters obey certain requirements that is what worldly accepted and here we are not talking about just uh, some ghana standards we are talking about globally accepted standards and to do this you need to meet a certain requirement and it requires money so why don't we do it right so it's a very serious business we need to meet the global standards not the ghana standard as i initially stated and you agree with me that whenever these standards are there, and we don't comply. What happens is that our shipments what gets rejected. Nobody would like to take any uh, exports that hasn't gone through the right quality controls. And if something is rejected, we lose money. Are lost in the process. Shippers become poorer. The nation does not get gain any forex from it, and in the long run, it affects the whole country in general. So that is what we have to do. So in order to make all these things work out for everyone, there are certain inspections or regimes, inspectorate regimes that are set up. To maintain all these standards, we need bodies to be able to maintain all the standards that are available to us. And these systems or these bodies that are set up, they do their work very diligently. The least mistake from us every shipment will be rejected. That is why we need to do our jobs very, very well. You can mention from Ghana, I see my buddies from the plant quarantine, PPRSD, they are doing a very fantastic job. Uh, customs are also available, also doing their best to make sure things are done well. Uh, NACOP, uh, do we have NACOP here? Okay, great, yeah. NACOP is also trying with the limited resources available to them, but uh, what, what, what can we do? It's a, a very difficult thing, but thank you for the job you've been doing. So for starters, that is what this whole thing is about. So let's look at some of the challenges that we encounter with some of the exporters when they bring some of their shipments to us. First of all, the biggest problem, as was earlier mentioned, packaging. Some of them come with very, very, very poor packaging. Uh, it's very, I would say, it's sometimes cheap products. And what happens is when these things are put in all these poor packaging, then people will not accept it. If you don't uh, get a right package, it will be rejected. These are serious quality control measures that are put in place. So it's very, very important that we need to get the right packaging for our products. Then also we look at some of the pa packages that come, especially for the fruits that we export. Some come, as uh, my handlers will agree with me, very open. Some of them, the least rainfall, the fruits are affected. Sometimes the slightest handling, fruits are getting crushed. Fruits are getting, if you look at something like papaya that we export, the least shaking, the least touch, it gets uh, dented. And if it's dented with all the temperature regulations, it goes bad. And if it goes bad and it gets there, you can agree with me, nobody will accept it. 
they need it to be in a very good condition. So it's very important that we get the right packaging for our products. The next thing we'll talk about is uh, transport issues. We accept or we get uh, some shippers, especially, I mean, most of the food uh, exporters coming in, uh, for want of a better word, uh, I was so kind of you, right? Is that correct? The mini trucks. These are, I mean, you look at what, maybe I have to ship my pineapples at, let's say, 10 degrees, 15 degrees. And these are shipped in Amoso Kayamachus, traveling from long distances. And you, you can imagine the heat that we have here. Averagely, we are doing maybe about 25, 27 degrees. And these fruits are exposed. Most of them don't have cool trucks. Some of the big companies do have, but the most of the pineapple shippers, papaya, they come in these mini trucks, Amoso Kayamachu, which makes it very, very bad. I don't know why they use those trucks. I don't know what the, uh, the country can do, what government can do for some of these small and medium skilled exporters, because some of them can't afford the cool trucks. It's very expensive, I'm told. So maybe it's another conversation we can have to support some of these uh, small skilled uh, exporters to be able to up their game. So that is one thing with the transport. Another thing too is, most of these shippers or the farmers come from very uh, far areas. I mean, you look at people coming from uh, all the way from the Volta region, coming to do exports in Accra. There's in Koko. Even those days when you had J River coming all the way from Kaswa, you can imagine the traffic these uh, exporters faced. So you have them trying to meet or trying to get as close as possible to the departure time. These are fruits we are talking about. You don't want to harvest fruits and then keep them on the road for six hours, eight hours, when the flight departs, let's say in 10 hours. So you want to bring it as close as possible to the departure time. And that is where traffic comes in. Maybe as uh, we construct more roads, uh, we get our infrastructure right, maybe it will help. But let's try as much as possible to get the right trucks right infrastructure, then we can get uh, a good business out of these exports. The next thing we'll talk about is uh, what I call the uh, guru agents, or as somebody will say, uh, the can I help you agents. Very difficult to trace, very, they don't have physical offices. Uh, whatever their issues, it's very difficult to get to them. They don't describe, they lack a lot of training. Some of them can't even, describe certain things that the export. Typical example, uh, my brothers that do the food items, uh, I don't know if anybody has ever exported precursor. What's the English name for precursor, if I may ask? Uh, can somebody help me? Uh, precursor. Uh, it has a botanical name, okay. So you have some of these agents, go agents in quotes. They don't know what is even called a botanical name. And the thing is, if I write precursor on my uh, packing list, when it gets there, the agency is doing the border inspections. They don't know what precursor is. You know it here, or we know it here in Ghana as precursor. But you have precursor on your packing list. It gets to this uh, gentleman at the border inspection post. He doesn't know precursor. What, what will he do? He will reject it. Because that name that is being used is not accepted globally. It's not a global standard name. That is why we should try as much as possible to get the right names, get the right people, describe the exports that we do well. So when it gets there, we can easily check it and solve some of these uh, issues that we encounter. The next thing we'll talk about will be the lack of synergy between the state agencies. Uh, my brother from NACOB is here. Sometimes what we realize is um, NACOB will go and do their checks. Customs will also do their checks at separate times. Now, there's a possibility of customs allowing certain things to go. NACOB will say, no, this is not allowed. This is banned or this is forbidden. Would it be possible for them to try and do their checks at the same time? It's something, a conversation that we can have so that if there's something even hidden, then both agencies can look at it and either reject or accept it. 
if customs is doing this at a different time and NACOV doing at a different time, some of the agents are a bit, uh, they look at the loopholes in the system. So they will present a different document to NACOP and then another one to customs. At the end of the day, what happens is what you have people smuggling goods into the aircraft, which is not good. It will get rejected when it gets to the final destination. So this is my um, humble appeal to NACOP, to customs. Customs is not here. I don't know if they are here, but maybe you can pass on the information. Let's try as much as possible to get that synergy right so that it helps everybody in the system and then we do what is expected of us. Then we move on to the illegal and then smuggle goods. Whenever we are doing shipment, whatever destination, you realize that in Ghana, most of our shipments either go, mostly go to the EU. And the EU has a list of items that are banned, that are prohibited. Some are also controlled. But then you sometimes wonder how some of these smart, uh, goods are able to get on the other side. For some reason that we don't know, we are not able to detect it here, which is very, it's an indictment on us actually, that we have all the state institutions, we have all the security apparatus checking these things, but in some way, somehow, they're able to get onto the aircraft and they are only found out when they are doing the inspections there. It's an indictment on all of us. Why are we not able to detect some of these things? Right, so to continue, let's look at some of these things. For instance, an agent will tell you, I'm shipping foodstuffs. Where, somebody should correct me if I'm wrong anyway. It's Mandingo foodstuff. Is it foodstuff? <laughs> 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 okay, so you have somebody saying I'm shipping foodstuffs and these things are found in there. Wrongly declared. If you are going to ship alcohol, get the right documentation. These are alcoholic beverages. So if you declare them as foodstuffs, it is totally wrong. These are alcoholic beverages and it should be declared as such. Because the thing is, alcoholic beverages have a way that they have to be shipped. Different from what? Foodstuffs. So if you mix them up, I mean, I'm looking at this, if something you have maybe at best, or I mean, it's gonna spoil the whole consignment. So let's declare them properly so that we can reduce the costs and the fines that we get charged with. But if we get charged or we get surcharged, we'll pass it on to you. Well, nobody wants to do business and make losses. So let's try as much as possible to do the right thing. Let's look at another picture. What do you think is wrong with these shipments, for instance? I know, yeah, Ghanaians like their smoked fish and their uh, shrimps and all these things. But the thing is, if you're gonna ship these things, let's package them all. Now, if I, ha I ha have these uh, things packaged in this black poly thing, it is, so wrong. I don't know why we do this. Maybe there's a way somebody should tell us why they do this. Maybe the, the food items guys can give us more information on why they do it. But this is totally, totally wrong. Fish products, for instance, are not, they, they are controlled. You don't do this. And these things, all these pictures I'm showing you were actually found on an airline from Ghana. All these shipments are from Ghana. And these are like serious, serious breaches in the system. So how were these guys able to smuggle them out? That is the question we need to answer. Another picture. This is, uh, I can easily detect the one in the middle, uh, Procontre, right? <laughs> these are pig feet, or as we call it, also banned, but they found, it, or they, they were able to detect it on arrival when the goods got seized. So what are we doing wrong? What are we not doing right? At the end of the day, all these things are found out. The airlines are going to be fine. So please, these are all real stuff. These are not Photoshop images. Let me be honest with you. These are not Photoshop images. Our time is very limited. We have several, several, several pictures. 
and videos. Otherwise, you could have, we can spend a whole day talking about all these things. So please, this is just a snapshot of some of the things that happen. Penicillin and Wusaslin, these are antibiotics. My small, um, uh, as it were, drug selling with toy, even for antibiotics, you need a doctor's prescription. And some way, somehow, people are able to smuggle it into some of their products that they ship. We realize that even if they were done, it's under doctor's description or prescription, drugs as opposed to transport assets at a certain temperature. Now, you have them mixing these things with certain food items that are traveling at ambient temperatures, right? Drugs mo mostly 8 degrees, 2 to 8 degrees, sometimes 10 to 15 degrees. Now you have them being transported at ambient temperatures. Our brothers out there, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, are going to take these drugs, even if it's done well. And under these temperatures, they are not good. The efficacy of the drug is being affected. Why do we want to kill some of our bodies? Sometimes we take certain medications and we go like, oh, the drug is not working. It's not as if the drug is not good, but in the conditions in which it was transported has made the drug not to be what, working well. And then we'll turn around and blame some, uh, sorry for my language, but some old woman in the village saying, oh, mommy, they hear me, but then, it's not my mother, old mother, somewhere that is doing us. We are the ones doing it to ourselves. So please, let's try and do the right thing. With the proper training, I'm sure we can get all these things sorted out. How all these things that we are talking about, what happens? Or what, is the con or what are the consequences of all this? Airlines are getting fined. The shipment that I just showed, all these, these pictures, there was a fine of over 20,000 euros. Because the thing is, if one bad nut affects the whole consignment, all the shipment is seized. Whether you have some good, some bad, everything is affected. They don't care whether uh, Koju's own is good and Amish own is bad. Everybody is affected. And you had about 22,000 net weight of food items on, on, on that particular flight, and we're fined over 20,000 euros. Who is going to pay for this? Should the airline pay? Should we just forgive the client or the shipper that brought these in when they knew that they were not supposed to add these things? Who pays for it? How many of us can come up with 20,000 euros just on the spot? So please, these are very serious. And it affects the airlines too. If the airline I'm working with is gets fined, whenever it lands, oh, this airline, they are noted for what? Bad products. They are noted for bad packaging. They are noted for what? bringing in smart good goods. It's not good for business. We are all in this to make profits. Nobody's in business to make losses. So let's try as much as possible to do what is right so that the airlines are not fined and we also what? Don't fine you. Then you look at all these confiscated shipments. When these things are found, shipments are getting what? Confiscated. They'll be seized. If you are lucky, maybe they will uh, go and dump it and some people can <laughs> go and take it. But then when they are confiscated, mostly they are destroyed. And it comes at a cost. They will not destroy it. And it's not here that sometimes things come and they'll say, oh, Zoom Lion, come for it. Nobody gets charged. Here, there's a bit of laxity. We, we are not so strict with some of these things. But then out there in the EU, some of these things, you are going to be fined. And the cost will be passed on to all of us to pay. Then you are looking at storage costs and then blacklisting of our shippers. I can tell you for a fact that some shippers have been blacklisted. They are not allowed to do certain exports with us because they are bringing our name into distribute and we don't want that. What, what they do is they ship with this uh, airline. When they are blacklisted, they move on to another airline. If I blacklist you, then you go to uh, AC to ship with AC. That is where I feel the state institutions should also help us, that whenever somebody is blacklisted, at least you, you have their database. Unless, of course, there's no database. 